Hey, Noor. Salma, can you hear me? I think it's uh, 4.30 and I let's let's uh, at least give it a start. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, good morning, everyone, depending on where you're joining from. So from today onwards, uh, we're looking to start into the actual contents towards the orientation of the certification. And uh, I can see quite a few people joining in. And as usual, let us give the benefit of time uh, to the rest of them who would like to join. Uh, we will still wait for another uh, four to five minutes so that uh, we will start exactly in 4.35, let's say another four minutes so that uh, people can join in. And then uh, we will just do a quick recap of what was done yesterday. And we will deep dive into uh, day two, where the actual webinars are starting and the contents uh, towards the certification. Hi, Philip. Hi, Noor. Yep. Let's recap uh, what we uh, discussed yesterday. Yeah, I think, yes. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. I think it's about time and it's good. Um, yeah. Because, yeah. We have good. So, um, yeah. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, once again, everyone. Um, so, just uh, stepping into the first day where we actually go into the uh, contents. And uh, uh, b before we begin, just a quick uh, interaction. I see only seven people have joined in so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Quickly, can you just uh, mention which region you're coming in from? If you can type in which region you're coming in from, India, anywhere in the Middle East, uh, you can use the chat, just put that in so that we know yeah. where you're joining in from. I'll just leave a few seconds for that. And then while yeah. we do that, um, uh, quickly, yesterday, what we did is we give you a quick look into what HIMSS is. I'm sure most of you would have already known about that. And uh, 
after that we stepped into what is uh, the him certification what exactly uh, we would be doing uh, over the next 3 weeks and uh, after that we also quickly recap the contents uh, between uh, noor and i we looked at some questions also so let's uh, look forward to today and i think we are about time uh, over to you noor okay philip thank you so so do you start now our presentation yes please go ahead yep okay hi everyone thanks for attending our webinars first i would like to introduce myself i am noor lethar i am pmp cfh i am an rti certified and i have almost 12 plus year of experience in healthcare it and i would like to share your experience with my okay with you guys okay so what today we are going to present we are going to present three topics today healthcare environment i am going to present then technology environment philip will take care and then again i'll return back i'll present uh, health informatics okay so let us start so under under healthcare environment you are required to study following topics articulate characteristic and services of different types of healthcare organization articulate characteristic of interrelationship within and across healthcare i organization okay what is relationship like among there are many providers in healthcare like pharmacies uh, diagnostic center healthcare providers uh, they are so what is interrelationship among them okay then we will talk about roles and responsibilities of healthcare information management system professional oh, we will talk about uh, what is the role of chief medical information officer what is the role of chief technology officer what is the role of uh, developer programmer like this okay then we will talk about role of government regulatory professional and accreditation agencies in healthcare okay so so let us start healthcare environment first we are going to talk about i have already mentioned this topic so first we are going to discuss about articulate characteristic and services of different types of healthcare organizations so first we'll see the classification of hospital how hospital is classified hospital can be classified based on ownership hospital can be public hospital or private hospital okay private hospital can be for profit and can be for non profit okay for profit means you have to pay tax non profit means you are tax exempt okay then hospital can be further classified based on level of care is provided like it can be classified like a primary care uh, secondary care or tertiary care what is difference primary care most of the time we visit when we have any problem first we try to go to primary healthcare okay primary care healthcare providers if uh, we have problem and they cannot uh, treat us then they refer us to secondary okay secondary providers and tertiary hospital tertiary means you are going to be hospitalized in healthcare okay tertiary then hospital can be also classified based on geographic location okay it can be like urban hospital it can be rural hospital or it can be metropolitan statistical hospital okay still we are talking about classification of hospitals it can be classified based on type of services offered okay like uh, community or general hospitals a specialty hospital like you know there is a specific hospital they just provide uh, treatment for like our eyes they, it can be a specialty hospital for cardiac patient like this okay our hospital can be also classified based on a specialization like you know rehabilitation is for children long term acute care or heart or cardiac hospital can be also classified based on the level of care it provide it can be short term care hospital or long term hospital long term care okay hospital can be 
also uh, teaching hospitals, okay? We are, in addition to providing inpatient uh, clinical services, teaching hospital train future physicians and other healthcare providers, often associated with academic institution. Now we'll see what is outpatient or ambulatory care, where you are not required to be admitted in hospital, okay? It can be single independent providers, all the services done by just one person, or sometimes uh, many like professionals uh, make a group and they provide healthcare, okay? There is a community health organization, what they do. Healthcare organizations, sorry, the population of local areas tend to be broadly referred as community healthcare organization, okay? In healthcare environment, a community generally refer to a specific geographic location in which healthcare is delivered, okay? It can be also classified like diagnostic and pharmaceutical services or ancillary services. Okay. Key services provided in this area include like laboratory, and anatomic and anatomical pathology services, diagnostic uh, imaging, radiology services, and pharmacies. Now we are going to talk about healthcare providers, uh, sorry, healthcare payers, who is responsible for uh, paying for healthcare services. It can be government finance and manage for armed families funded through country's taxes, okay? Like in United States, they have Medicare through which a citizen above 60 years of age and older have most of their healthcare needs provided. And Medicaid, this is also in the United States, shared cost of both, you know, like central government and the state government shared cost together, okay? This is for low-income people. Then there is another that is called SHIP, Children Health Insurance Forum, provides care to children and uninsured families that do not qualify for Medicaid and several others for a smaller group of special populations. Okay. Now we are going to talk about healthcare regulator. So what they do, healthcare regulator, in turn, monitor practitioner and facilities, provide information about industry changes, promote safety, and ensure legal compliance and quality services. They play a very important role. Otherwise, you know, it will be mess. Then we are going to talk about research and academic, what they do, support to research and administration of universities, academic uh, medical centers, hospital physician group, other research, and publish much of the knowledge that advances science of medicines. Now we are going to see what is the benefit of uh, interconnected uh, healthcare network, okay? So what they do, enable access to comprehensive care services. What it mean? Like uh, we have uh, many healthcare, under healthcare services, we have a diagnostic center, we have uh, pharmacies, we have OPD, inpatient, outpatient. So if they are interconnected, you know, it, uh, healthcare services will be very fast, okay? It will uh, remove errors, Assure effective transfer of care. Suppose one person want to move from one healthcare to another healthcare. So his data, his electronic inform, uh, his data like uh, can move from one hospital to another hospital electronically. So this transaction will be very fast. It will save a lot of time. So there is many uh, uh, terminology we use to achieve this goal. 
So to connect uh, different healthcare organization, we use some kind of standard we call HL7. Okay, under HL7, there are many uh, terminologies like uh, clinical document architecture. We will cover in detail later. Okay. Next topic is uh, ensuring general portability of care, like healthcare information exchange, which allow different organization to exchange information to one another. Okay, like uh, insurance companies, what happened when, we, when a patient hospital, in, uh, when admitted in hospital, what happened? Patient all data is captured. And for the payment, that data goes to health insurance, okay, companies. So these things happen through health information actions. Now, uh, new concept is coming. Like when I, I'm in one state and I want to move another state, uh, and I have some kind of accident, so my data can be moved from one state to another. That's also called health information actions. So it's going to save a lot of time. Okay, some companies, uh, some countries are al already working on this, like Canada, they have health, InfoWay, a nonprofit organization made up of 14 federal, uh, provincial, and territorial ministers of health. In the United States, they have a nationwide health information network, NHIN. In the United Kingdom, they have a health and social care information center, HSCIC. Health information exchange can also support reporting public and population health. Like in COVID situation, government need a lot of data. So this is also helping, okay? First, I'd like to differentiate between what is electronic health record and electronic medical record, okay? Electronic medical record is simply patient chart in form of electronic, okay? and Electronic health record is it's our uh, longitudinal health record. Okay, if I have uh, received healthcare from ten hospitals, our my electronic health record should show all the care I have received from all the hospitals. Okay, this is the difference, basic difference between electronic health record and electronic medical record. So we are going to talk about electronic health record can improve public and population health outcomes. Be efficiently collecting data form the data organization and leverage for quality improvement and prevent fun of activities EHR can improve public health reporting and surveillance by making it easier for our organization to collect standardized systematic data EHR will improve reporting capabilities It can expand communication between healthcare providers and public health officials. Better your organization's ability to pre prevent disease with electronic health information about the entire population and patient can serve you. You can take more meaningful at the needs of patient and after better healthcare. EHR can remind providers when patients need immunization, enable providers to send, remind you to patient for preventive follow-up care and give providers access to clinical protocols. Obtaining appropriate reimbursement for quality care. As we discussed earlier, what happened when we get treatment in hospital, uh, our data move from electronic, uh, like a department, medical department to insurance companies. And they use some kind of coding, you know, based on our, uh, what diagnosis they did and what procedure they applied. Based on this uh, payment happened in healthcare, okay? So th these things can automate this whole process. Yesterday, we talked about uh, blockchain technology. Okay, what is blockchain technologies? It's a, like an open ledger 
and which can not it's a decentralized database nobody can alter data okay once it's uh, computed on blockchain so what happened we have some kind of a smart contract okay so it will automate this uh, payment system you know in healthcare there is a rcm revenue cycle management process so bl using blockchain technology with a smart contract we can automate the whole process it's going to save a lot of time and it can also remove errors We have already discussed about what is integrate, integrated delivery system. So now we are going to talk about roles and responsibilities of healthcare information management system. Professions like uh, chief information officers, what they do, they oversee Applications and technology, procurement, acceptance, and adoptions practice throughout the healthcare services organization, responsible for alignment of corporate and HMIS strategic goals and objectives, including use of IT to improve administrative efficiencies and clinical productivity and effectiveness. So what's happened in healthcare? Leaders, they decide, they create mission vision. What is uh, why, uh, meaning of mission means why we exist, okay? Maybe our mission is to provide chief, uh, cheap healthcare to uh, poor pe person. It can be mission, uh, sorry. It can be our uh, mission, yeah, right. And vision, maybe we want to have uh, 10 branches in coming like one year or two years, okay? That is our vision. So leaders uh, should decide mission and vision. Then we are going to talk about chief security officer. He is responsible for protecting patient data. Okay, in United States, if uh, you know price is very high, if due to any error some patient data is uh, leaked, they have to pay minimum fifty five fifty five thousand dollars. Okay, so in uh, security is very big issue in United States healthcare. Okay. Now ch chief technology officer, they are the one who implement technology. Okay, they are responsible for maintaining servers. Uh, like uh, you, now we are moving from virtual to, uh, sorry, physical to virtual server. So they talk about technology, you know, how we, what technology we need in future. So they are responsible for this, okay. Uh, there are another role like chief medical information officer or chief health information officer or chief nursing officers, what they do. Effective integration of clinical insight into system. There are other roles like executive roles and responsibilities for healthcare services organization, what they do, like chief CEO, chief executive officers, okay. They are responsible for managing day-to-day -day operation in healthcare. Then we have financial officer, who is responsible for taking care of all the finance, financial issues. Chief operation officer, who is responsible for managing like facilities. There is chief marketing officer, and there is some other role like a chief medical officer. And we have a chief privacy officer. Okay, chief privacy officer role is very critical. He's responsible for protecting, protecting patient uh, critical, info, uh, sorry, confidential information. Now we are, go we are going to talk about the structure a CIO may oversees and in could include like uh, application development and support, data center and operation, database administration, desktop support, information security and network operation, okay? And a specific role an IT organization may expect to fill. Some of the role need, uh, we need in healthcare IT, like uh, desktop support, database administrator, programmer, application developer, web developer, network engineer analyst, system analyst, project manager, and security analyst. 
Now we are going to talk about roles of government, regulatory, professional and accreditation agencies in healthcare. So what government do? Government purchase healthcare, provide healthcare, ensure access to quality care for vulnerable population, regulate healthcare markets, support acquisition of new knowledge, develop and evaluate health technologies and practices, monitor healthcare quality, inform healthcare decision maker, develop healthcare workplace, convene stakeholders from across the healthcare system. Now we are going to talk about uh, professional association role, like uh, professional bodies, what they do. They set uh, and assess professional examinations, provide support and continuing professional development through learning opportunities and tools for recording and planning, publish uh, professional journals and magazines, provide networks for professionals to meet and discuss their field of expertise, Issues a code of conduct to guide professional behavior, deal and complaints against professional and implement disciplinary procedures. Now we are going to talk about regulatory bodies, what they do. Primary activities is to protect public. Healthcare regulatory agencies serve to broad range of functions in healthcare environment. Private sector organization, commission, and associations may perform a regulatory capacity as well, like accreditation organizations. Now we are going to talk about accreditation organizations, like uh, there is a uh, international accreditation organization we call Joint Commission International. In India, we have uh, NPHS something, okay? play a semi-regulatory role. In that, they offer, uh, sorry, I'll read again. Play a semi-regulatory role in that they often serve on behalf of federal organization to ensure a specific standard or condition of participation are met. So what they do, they are the one who accredit any healthcare organization and make sure that healthcare organization is following the best practices in in healthcare, okay. And in United States, what happened? You know, if some organization failed to accredite, sometimes, uh, like insurance company, they stop paying for those hospitals. Uh, some organization like CMS, approved accreditation organization, uh, joint commission. Uh, they have several types of program type, like you, they have. Uh, ambulatory, surgical centers, critical access hospitals, home health agencies, hospices, okay? Hospitals and psychiatric hospitals. There is another accred accreditation association for ambulatory healthcare. They have program type like ambulatory surgical center and Accreditation Commission for Healthcare, ACSC. They have program type, Home Health Agencies, HHA. Okay, that brings us to end of this part of presentation. Now I'll move to Philip. Okay, Philip, floor is yours. So um, I think we moved pretty quickly. Um, okay. Noor, uh, you can give me the access to the to share the screen, and I I'll share from my okay, I'll laptop. But in screen. the but, but in the meantime, I I would like to take you know just this five to ten minutes. I I can see that uh, you know uh, quite some people have joined midway through the uh, session as well. Um, so, but uh, just to recap quickly on what Noor covered so far. Uh, during the days, you know, he started off with the uh, healthcare organizations, you know, uh, the kind of hospitals, how do you classify it? Um, why does that classification happens based on, 
the speciality or based on the kind of uh, environment it is set into. That was the first one. Uh, second one was all these healthcare organizations, how do they uh, interact with each other, right? So what is the interrelationships between these organizations as well? Um, following that, uh, he uh, picked up the roles and responsibilities of uh, health information management professionals specifically, and how do they contribute into the healthcare environment? Uh, what are the specific roles? Uh, and all those things. So this is bringing together the uh, entire healthcare environment. And finally, uh, what was also introduced was the government, the regulatory bodies, and also the accreditation uh, organizations as well. So when you think of it, um, it, it's an introduction into the healthcare environment. That was what was done so far. And uh, moving ahead, uh, uh, the first part, sorry, again, uh, the first part, it is important for you to understand, it may not fit exactly because I can see most of you in the beginning of the session when you when you mentioned that you're coming from oh, which part of the world, I could see it is uh, there were four people who mentioned it was almost four different countries, you may not uh, identify that it fits exactly into this uh, particular uh, uh, dynamics, but at the same time, uh, in general, there is, there is a structure to the healthcare environment. There are these different roles that come into play and how the roles actually interact with each other. So that being said, and that being introduced to all of you, would you have any questions at this stage? Any questions? Do you see anything drastically different from the countries that you're coming in from? Um, do you see uh, that it is completely different. Please use the uh, chat or please use the Q&A. Let's, let's take the next five to 10 minutes to sort of um, um, fit it in, use uh, uh, the experience that you've had, use the exposures that you've had so far, use the environment where you're working right now. What do you think uh, it is and how do you think uh, it is different, similar? Do you say, does it make sense or does it not make sense? Let's like uh, talk about that. Let, let's take the next five minutes on that. In the meantime, Noor uh, and Mr. Ishak, if you want to add anything, please do that um, on the context of the healthcare environment so far. And uh, we can wait for the uh, questions or any interactions that is coming through right now. Yeah. So, just we should uh, try to understand what is the goal of this certification. The goal of this certification is to bridge the gap, as we discussed yesterday. There are two domains, healthcare and IT. And we want to use technology to automate the healthcare process, okay? So first we need to understand how healthcare works. We, we, okay, Where, like what is the registration department role? What is admitting department? So in, those, in this course, you are going to learn about uh, first, how healthcare functions. Okay, what is the role of different types of uh, healthcare providers? Like uh, there is a coding department, OPD department, inpatient, outpatient, admitting. Okay, and once we understand how healthcare functions, we, we, we are going to use technology to automate those process. Okay, before it was like a paper-based process. Now we are going to automate whole process using, using technologies. Like just to take a, an example of a PAC system, X-ray, okay? So what's happened before, if you remember, we have to go to do x-ray and we get our film. Okay, it's a physical. physical. Then we go to doctor and doctor see our x-ray based on this, uh, he give treatment or suggest. Now we have a electronic system we call PACS, picture archiving and communication system. What's happened? Once we go to any diagnosis center, they will do our x-ray and they put in system, okay? And if, uh, or uh, that organization is interconnected. We, we don't need any kind of uh, data from us, that organization. Doctors can see sitting in his office, okay? What is our diagnostic and, okay, diagnosis. In case uh, there is no uh, exchange from two department, we need to take a electronic copy, okay? And doctor can place uh, that data in, his or her system and view our data. Okay. Okay, Philip. <laughs> That's I want to get. Yep. 
No, no, good addition to that. Um, so yeah. Noor, if you can give me access, I do not see Should much I... questions coming in. Yeah, you can stop sharing. I will stop and, sharing uh, now. I can share my screen. Okay, I will stop sharing. Thank you. Can you please give example on question might be asked in healthcare environment also? Okay, at the end of the uh, our presentation, we will have few questions. Okay. Okay. Just let me know when you can see the screen and it's uh, ready and then we can go ahead. Noor, can you see the screen? Can is yeah. my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is visible, Philip. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, um, so that was a good start into the healthcare environment. We will we'll slowly start ramping up. Uh, right now, what we're going to look into is specifically, uh, you know, the technology and a uh, environment that sort of enables the, you know, uh, the entire healthcare environment. Right. So let's start breaking it up uh, one by one and. Um, the, the core um, learning outcomes from this is one, we want to try to understand the characteristics of the technology infrastructure, right? So starting from the network to the hardware to the devices, that would be the first part of it. Second one uh, would be understanding the most commonly used uh, applications or softwares that you see in and out in the, health, uh, in the healthcare environment or the organizations. And last one, we will touch upon certain trends and challenges that we see in the healthcare technologies uh, currently. Yep. So moving forward, let's deep dive into um, the key components. So the first three components of the technology environment, first part is hardware. Right? I know this phrase is sort of becoming a little obsolete nowadays, but um, with most of the applications moving to the cloud and all, but still, at the core of it, uh, the hospital, uh, although the applications are run on the cloud, there are plenty of uh, capital that is invested towards the hardware. Right? So the first hardware IT infrastructure, as I see, the major components can be outlined as the following. Right. So the first one is the servers. Um, due to the, um, uh, what do you say, the the, the importance and the delicacy of the data that is collected over a period of time. As and when so far, even now, uh, conventionally, we still have servers on premise, but more and more cloud uh, services are being offered. Uh, they're becoming FDA approved. They're becoming more and more approved to different countries, uh, legal requirements based on the security and privacy laws or bills that is passed as well, but at the end of the whole thing, for any of these applications to run, we need a server, right? That's the first part. Second is um, irrespective of the computing power of how the applications are catered towards the hospital, you need something which is the data storage, right? Whatever is collected uh, as a part of a patient's visit or a citizen's vi visit in the hospital, uh, starting from the uh, appointment system to the visit, to the diagnosis, to the reports, to the discharge, everything has to be collected and those have to be stored uh, over a long period of time. So there are, there are storage systems also that are in place. Mobile devices, it can be two, both. It can come from the patient side, it can come from the doctor's side, it can come from the operations perspective. There are plenty of mobile devices and more and more applications are being adopted from uh, a mobile perspective, right? It's, it's handheld devices, you bring your own devices. It all has to be hooked onto the network and it helps in the smooth operation uh, of collection and the operation of the uh, hospital environment. Uh, the last one, of course, uh, one of the most, uh, I would say capital intensive part of it is all the medical devices, right? Starting from your ECG systems to ultrasounds, to X-rays, to CTs, to MRs, Everything uh, uh, 
that uh, are contributed or qualified as a medical device also comes under the hardware. And this is to be managed together. The good thing is, you know, health information systems can combine all these things together. There are standards that bring in interoperability to facilitate the smooth operation of data flowing in from the medical devices to the medical uh, mobile devices to the servers and back to the patients and the doctors, right? So that is one component moving ahead uh, of, the, of the three core components uh, that you need to focus on. The next one would be the applications that are used. So applications uh, can be classified for, uh, again, three to four different cr uh, criteria, uh, starting off with the administrative part of it, the clinical part of it, and then to support the staff and storage of the data, and finally, the uh, patient records part of it. So if you look at it, um, the, the thought process you as a health information management process uh, person needs to is you need to identify what how do you choose these applications right so uh, um, as a part of the uh, certification or the body of knowledge when you're part of the team how do you understand how to choose these applications is very important do you choose it from um, a single vendor for the entire hospital do you choose the best of the breed? Uh, an example of this is uh, your hospital information can come from one vendor, your radiology information system and your pharmacy information system can be coming from another vendor. That will mean that you're choosing the best of the breed, right? Um, there are specialized in-house uh, or uh, uh, softwares that will cater to different functions inside the hospital also. So at a high level, to reduce, uh, th there are some hospitals that approach with, okay, let, let's um, find the best uh, one vendor breed that can probably cater to the entire applications for the hospital. Let's stick to it because it's easy to manage. But at the same time, if your hospital is moving to certain specialization, you want to choose best of the breed. So uh, I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but there are times when you want to choose uh, one over the other based on the operations of the hospital. Uh, the third and fourth is uh, commercial off the shelf uh, is an option where you just uh, pick something that is easily available, specifically when it comes to managing the human resource or managing the finances, it's easier to choose because it's becoming more standardized over there. But at one, when it comes to specific workflows inside the hospital, depending on the kind of, uh, it can be, uh, an oncology hospital, it can be a mother and child hospital. Depending on that, you might have to choose uh, softwares according to that. And the last option is, of course, you probably wouldn't uh, want to trust that an externally developed software can cater to your needs. And at the same time, you are also confident that you have a team in-house to develop something like that. And that's when you choose an in-house developed uh, uh, product application. So I'm sure all of you would have uh, experienced these different options of choosing the application in the environment. So moving to uh, the next one is the network, right? So everything is, uh, what do you say, interconnected right now. Information has to flow from one um, uh, equipment device application to the other. It can be inside the hospital, it can be external to the hospital. It can be between organizations. It can be between hospital to government institutes, hospitals to insurance. And I think network is also a major component. There will be both wired and wireless connections. So that is uh, the last key component of what enables the technology environment. So that there are different types of network, there are different types of network topology that will enable it and there are different protocols also that are used as a part of it. So being exposed and aware of all these things will also help you understand how the networks are laid out. Is there VPN connections established? Is there leased connections established? Yeah. What is the hierarchy? Do you have a hybrid model of a cloud and an on-premise uh, solution? 
So uh, what is the communication protocols? Do you transfer information using HL7 or any other standards? So different kinds of, uh, uh, you know, um, considerations has to be done also while you design the network. So these are the three main components at a high level where you start off with the technology environment. Any, any questions on this so far? If not, I'm moving. You can still keep asking the questions. I'll keep a look into the Q&A box and um, I don't want it to be a monotonous uh, you know, interaction. So um, if as and when you have questions, please go ahead and uh, drop it in the Q&A and uh, Noor and Mr. Ishak, if you can stop yeah. me, let's take it as an interactive thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very important uh, to address the queries you know, that people may have. And uh, I would also just uh, add uh, to what uh, Philip said just now. Now, I think uh, you know, from here on, we will be getting into uh, a bit heavy material. So it is always advisable uh, for you to ponder and then you know, uh, ask any specific query that you may have. Okay, so don't uh, you know, hesitate to ask any kind of question. Okay, so uh, I, I would really recommend and, and ask you to please, you know, ask any questions uh, that you may have. And, and right now, I would also uh, request everyone to focus on what is being said rather than how the exam will be. I think a lot of you are kind of having this, you know, uh, sort of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, like a frenzied uh, <laughs> animosity towards the examination. So uh, let's, uh, you know, there are people who have faced it and they've cleared it also. So don't worry too much about it. If you if you would focus on what is being said right now, then your chances of clearing will be also very high. So that's what I just wanted to, because we, we keep getting questions again and again, right? Even the previous question also, okay, how would the exam be? How would the questions be? If you have got the point very clearly, what is being said? I don't think you don't. You need to worry about the the the, the type of question that will be asked. So okay, back to you, Philip. Thanks. One hundred percent, Mr. Ishak. Thank you for you know spreading that as well. So I think it's it's something that uh, is mirrored from yesterday's talk as well. Um, I, I would say you know over the next few months, keep an open mind, look around, see what is happening. It is all your practical observation that is literally being asked for the exam. It's, it's very practical. They're not going to come with pure bookish kind of questions. Um, if you start correlating to the work environment that you are in, you would be to easily uh, go through a lot of it. But at the same time, you know, for people who do not have the experience, I would also say the book would also give you a guidance to what you need to be looking for. So. Again, um, I would do this again and again. Noor started off with the healthcare environment. We are laying the base right now. We want to give you a practical environment of a uh, practical view into how the environment is. From there, we are taking it into how the technology environment is laid off. We will go further into getting deeper into how the systems work, how the uh, team works and what is the process around that. Okay, so let's let's move ahead slowly. Um, the next part of the uh, session is focusing or diving into the applications, right? So uh, applications are also classified as, like I mentioned, as clinical, administrative, finance, uh, financial, and consumer uh, at a high level. So let's go through uh, clinical applications or let's, let's uh, uh, try to make it another a little bit interactive as well. I, I don't really prefer when it is monotonous again. Um, for the next 10 seconds, if you can just quickly type in, what do you think are clinical applications? Can you give me some examples? It's just three letter words, four letter words that you'd need to just drop into the chat. How would you do that? What are clinical applications that you see in hospitals? Good one, EMR, right, Vax. That's a good start. Yes, EMR, Vax. 
Elias, yeah. Elias. Mm -hmm. Chris. Very good. Yeah. So that that's good. So that's good. So if it's, uh, so it's it's a clear understanding on what clinical applications. That's all you need to understand, right? So what are clinical applications contributing into, right? Uh, it's it's specifically you've started with things, but those clinical applications um, at the at the core of it, by definition, they are designed for one, collecting, storing using manipulating as in if you're taking RIS for an example, you're actually using the data that is collected based on the examinations, when you're scheduling the examinations, when the reports are being released. So these are the different things. LIS similarly, what kind of laboratory examinations has to be done, when the reports will be released, who it is going to be. So all these things are then interconnected back to the EMR. Beautiful. So th these are clinical applications it actually supports the patient journey, right? Whatever the patient comes into the hospital for, for every visit uh, for a diagnosis uh, that is associated with this, these clinical applications enable that journey. Second one, administrative applications, right? So let's again, do a similar thing. What do you think are administrative applications? How do you differentiate between clinical and administrative? Let's, let's start thinking in this direction. What, what do you what applications do you think is important for the hospital management? Statistics, good one. So some kind of dashboards, right? Where do you see the dashboards? BI, BI business, tools, business intelligence, admission, yeah, admission. So. This more comes from the overarching perspective, right? Very true. So that's a good, good start again. So whatever helps with uh, the operations, the day-to-day -day operations uh, of the uh, hospital, starting from managing the team, right? Irrespective of you as a patient going there, the hospital still has to manage the entire hospital uh, human resources, the payroll, the salary, the accounting the admissions, what kind of financial aids, all those things. Those are the administrative applications. Finance, it's a slight overlap again. I'm not going to ask you that questions, but there are specific financial tools which are linked towards um, the EMR and uh, HIS uh, applications that you might have. If it is, that again depends on your one vendor solution or are you choosing the best of the breed kind of thing. So you have your you know, you have your tally to other financial applications that can be interlinked um, to the insurance uh, service provider as well as the HIS and then facilitate towards that, right? And uh, you have, then you have consumer applications. So let's break down consumer applications a little bit. Uh, it's to do anything that is to um, you as a patient, right? You, if you're visiting, how do you have access to that? How do you how is the information shared with you? And do you have any control? Do you have the option to book an appointment? Do you have an option to see the reports that are generated? So any of these kind of things are mostly called consumer applications. Like a patient portal. Like a patient health record, PHRs or a patient portal. Yeah. These are all interchangeable yeah. uh, Name. names. Yeah. So you have an electronic health record which is usually um, EHRs, different countries um, are at different stages of actually uh, Philip, calling their systems health record. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, Noor, please uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, one, our attendees, you want to see the slide, previous slide again. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Can, yeah, her name is Bryna William. Don't, don't worry, Brian, we would also, you know, um, share the slides with you later. You will have access to the slides as well and the recording. So um, if at all there is anything that you need to catch, if there is a question, you can uh, definitely ask us. But if it is, you don't have to, um, you know, look at anything specifically. We're going to share the uh, slides with you later. 
So going back to EHRs, um, Noor very briefly touched upon this topic uh, as the as a part of the first session today, and um, you would take the patient through these. Uh, it's it's almost like a digital version of the patient's uh, paper chart, right? It's real time. It's patient centric. It's all the medical uh, treatments and the histories of the patient and. What is a very common word that is used in the industry is the longitudinal uh, patient record, right? It's uh, wherever the patient visit, whatever the patient uh, is being diagnosed for, it is across the entire thing. So those are EHRs as we call it. Yeah. Uh, PAX was also briefly mentioned. We had somebody. So we are looking at the specific uh, applications right now. It's the picture archiving and communication system. I'm sure almost everybody is familiar with this. Um, you have standards of this. Noor yesterday touched upon the topic of why PACs uh, and then why should you have a VNA yesterday. So that is also another uh, different layered approach where um, you would not be tied down to the classic old PACs where it is more standard and can be very difficult for migration out when you move from one vendor to the other. So why do you need a layer of VNA in between? Uh, then, of course, whatever was mentioned right now, the departmental uh, systems, uh, starting from the laboratory information systems to the radiology information systems to the pharmacy information systems, right? And go going one step down into it, uh, you, uh, we've tried to also mention uh, about LOINC. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've heard about these as well. So these are, this is uh, a database and it's a universal standard that is used uh, to identify medical laboratory observations. Uh, so there are different LOINC codes that are used uh, over the period of time um, once a uh, particular test is done, and that can be used to transmit, uh, used to be transmitted from one system to the other. So continuing with clinical applications, uh, there are some, um, Further clinical applications that I would like to touch upon, maybe not very common. Again, uh, going back to the point of if you are choosing the best of the breed, these are also specific niche systems uh, based on the care setting that you use, right? So emergency depart, how quickly do you communicate? So there might be a application that is connecting all your ambulances to the emergency departments to the on-call doctors, which is you know, a quick system that is routing uh, through just the people involved in the emergency department. Second is, of course, the operating system. Do you need uh, any consulting um, from an external site? What are the important things that needs to be monitored inside the operating system? So there are specialized softwares for that, as well as oncology. Oncology is a prolonged treatment that lasts over, you know, years. It's, it's a um, uh, you have several appointments that needs to be monitored and measured over a period of time. So similarly with labor and delivery as well, your mother and child care, your vaccinations, uh, all these are niche systems that can come. And of course, it is also um, probably offered as modules as a part of your HIS, but you can always choose a specific niche system based on your need in the hospital as well. Um, second, uh, the next one is knowledge-based systems um, or what they call as uh, clinical decision support system. So the names are again, uh, slightly interchangeable over here. Um, this has evolved again over a period of time. So right now, if you look at it in the current trends, uh, knowledge-based systems are mostly uh, something that has garnered all the data that has been collected over a period of time. So that means it has experience in it. Right now, it uses machine learning and AI systems to make certain suggestions based on the information that it is having. It can start from uh, it can start from scheduling. It can start from operations. It can start from preventive care. It can start from even tumor detection. Anything. So, knowledge-based systems are again specialized systems that has garnered a lot of data in the past. It has been trained for a specific purposes and it makes certain suggestions towards, you know, a smoother, better uh, uh, delivery of healthcare.
The next one is um, again, business intelligence was mentioned. So um, why, why, why do we need business intelligence, right? So if a hospital is functioning, we need BI tools to understand um, what is going good and at the same time, what is going bad as well. If something is going bad, how can we measure it? How can we easily observe it? And again, it can move from any functional department in the hospital. It can be from just scheduling. Do you see high number of people coming in during the day? Do you see people waiting for more time during the day? Uh, do you see the afternoons less? So do we need more staff in the morning? Do we need more staff in the evening? Um, uh, another one would be, uh, do you see a pattern in a kind of disease uh, outbreak that is coming through of all the patients that are coming in? So all these kind of different business intelligence is sort of extracted using uh, different kinds of BI tool. You normally set this up uh, and it's an always, it's an evolving tool also over a period of time. Scheduling, you've always seen it. Uh, you, you see token systems uh, to be a specialized thing as well, right? Uh, as a part of your administration, you need it. And uh, you can see kiosks being offered. You can see a mobile application being offered. These are all to provide better structured scheduling systems. Bed management system, I think uh, in one of the most recent times uh, and during COVID, one of the things that was very, very uh, much tried to be monitored was the bed management system. Lack of bed and oxygen cylinders in hospitals was a concern in a lot of countries. Um, at, at the peak of COVID, we had situations where people could not even find beds in hospitals to be appoint, admitted to. We could find people in the corridors of hospitals, outside hospitals. That used to be a very difficult thing. And bed management system, although it was proprietary at the beginning, we started expanding and moving or exchanging information from hospitals to hospitals to even governments, just to make sure there were portals during the COVID times to exchange information about bed management. All right, so another administrative application, practice management system. So um, while we are trying to give you uh, a lot of these examples, uh, this is not an exhaustive list of all the administrative applications, but this is again, giving you a perception of where these applications are fit, right? This is part of the administration. Keep your eyes and ears open, and, uh, you know, increase your uh, you know, practical exposure to all these things uh, over the next few months before you give the examinations and this is going to help you. Going into financial systems, um, uh, usually we have one financial system and uh, what we are trying to touch upon over here are the features. So anybody who is part of an organization, you know, you need to receive your salary, which is the first part, which is the payroll, simple thing. Second part is any patient that is coming and visiting your organization has to be billed, right? Um, third part is what is the pay payable if there is any pending payment. So usually when a treatment is happening, you go ahead with the treatments. You normally don't wait until the patient is paying it or you take an advance from the patient or you contact the insurance. So at any point of time, there might be something which is always payable and receivable. So these are uh, important features of the financial system. Some additional ones are of course the ledger, um, asset management, an important thing because assets has to be discounted over a period of time. You buy laptops, it has to probably be discounted over five years. At the end of five years, the value has to be discounted. So how do you manage the assets over a period of time? Uh, claim management, especially to communicate towards insurance companies. Different countries have different uh, maturity levels of insurance uh, companies and claim management. There are sometimes which are already pre-approved, sometimes which is happening later on. Sometimes uh, most of the, uh, you know, the, depending on the kind of, uh, examination or the reason for the visit or the diagnosis, uh, certain part of the claim might be paid. You might be paid 80, 90, 70%, 100%. So um, this is always, uh, what do you say, uh, very volatile and it has to be adapted over a period of time also. The insurance companies come out with the uh, 
um, the standards and the rules and regulations which is followed and accepted by the hospitals and the patient. So that is very uh, continuously changing at every point of time. And yes, contract management in hospitals, what you usually have is you give certain assignments or certain contracts to diff for different departments. It can be as simple as managing your radiology department or maybe even cleaning the hospital or the electricity and support, the network. So any kind of external vendor that is third party vendors that are being used other than the hospital team, there has to be a contract. Is it getting over when it has to be reviewed? Um, are they performing well? Uh, do we need to change the contract? All these things, how do you keep track of this contract management and relationship with your third party vendors is what contract management does. Um, and yes, uh, this is uh, the PHR or the you know patient portal that is uh, you know uh, very recently it is coming up uh, in, uh, in it is becoming more and more powerful I, I would say because earlier uh, most of the healthcare data was responsibly kept by the hospitals or the healthcare organizations now it is moving more and more towards um, the, the individual uh, to be having the right to keep the patient data, right? So it becomes a personal or a patient health record has to also, the patient also needs to have the right to keep the um, data. And at the same time, moving towards the patient-centric approach always, can I view my personal health information irrespective of whichever hospital I'm going to? Can I get an appointment to the right doctor, irrespective of whichever hospital I'm going to? Can I schedule my appointments? So all these different things uh, based on certain standards and interoperability are trying to be established right now, but patient health records are something that is gaining popularity right now. Moving into next um, is mainly the uh, trends and challenges. So before I move into the trends and future, any questions on the applications so far, uh, the financial applications, the consumer applications, um, anything that you would like to discuss? Um, do you see anything extra? If you wanna share anything, uh, this would be a good time. And, and the other good thing is all of you are coming from very different countries. So please share your experiences as well. Uh, if something is not covered in what you're listening to right now, there's of course going mm -hmm. to be a learning experience for other people as well. So mm -hmm. please type it into the group chat and um, you can you know, share your examples around that as well. Philip, there is one question from Hosham. Yeah. He's, ask, he's asking about- uh, One second, sorry, let me just- What example of practice management system? Yeah, okay. So- um, Again, practice management systems have been, uh, it can be overlapped uh, into this thing. So uh, a particular, a, any kind of practice that you have inside the hospital can also have a dedicated uh, application mm -hmm. for that. So uh, usually even um, the RIS from the conventional point of view, it is for the radiology practice, right? So that is also can be associated as a practice systems. It's just that um, these uh, terms are sometimes interused and um, yeah, it can be a little confusing here and there, but these are particular terms because a hospital can be run for certain practice. Uh, it can be again from mother and child, right? So a mother and child can, if it's a specialty hospital doing uh, mother and child practices, there can be an application just for that. Yeah. Yes, I would like to add Flip here. Practice yeah, management uh, used by, you know, sometimes it's uh, like uh, in hospital, we have a HIS, healthcare information system. You know? It's a uh, huge. Sometimes there are a small healthcare provider, like just one doctor, they, he has clinic. Of, in that case, they use practice management system also for a small providers. So they don't need the entire HIS, which is very heavyweight. They yeah, just need yeah, a small yeah. practice small, yeah. Yeah. to run their day-to-day -day task. Mm. Thank you, Hussam, for the question. 
just travel, I would like to add one more uh, real scenario. What's happened? I have, I have seen we are talking about many healthcare systems. So what's happened, you know, we like uh, one hospital make contract to develop system, HI system, and there is administrative system. So what problem happened, two systems were not integrated and there were uh, you know, confusion. HIS uh, developer, they said, no, it was not under our contract and admin, uh, admin system who developed the administrative part. Uh, they said, no, this is not our part. And problem was there like a pharmacy, uh, medicine come from warehouse, okay? So when we take uh, medicine from warehouse to pharmacy, uh, stock was not detected in warehouse because two systems were not integrated. So you have to, when you are working in healthcare, you have to be very careful about contract. Okay, when you develop your request for a proposal, okay, if you miss one point, it's it's going to cost any healthcare providers. Okay, so we are going to learn this all these uh, terms. And one more thing I would like to add about technology. What is the uh, use of technology? Now most of the uh, a lot of hospitals they are trying to achieve him stage like six or seven. So how you can achieve him stage six and seven? It's all about technology. Uh, they ask us to move from paper to paperless, HIMSS stage six or seven. If we achieve HIMSS stage seven means we are totally paperless and we are using some kind of uh, artificial intelligence, clinical decision support system, okay? And uh, at basic level, they want our system, we talk about a lot of system, okay? And, uh, like uh, clinical systems, admin systems, our all system must be integrated and they, we must have single ID and password. This is basic requirement. If you don't have a basic uh, this requirement, our systems are not integrated and we don't have single ID and password to access all the systems, healthcare system, whether it's a clinical or admin systems. And another requirement, uh, doctors must be able to view uh, imaging information like you know like radiology information or pack system from patient electronic medical record uh, he's not required to move from uh, switch from system from a system to pack system to move, move uh, to view uh, that uh, images okay patient images this is one of the basic requirement okay philip just yep you good, can good, yeah. good additions. No, um, I think I just quickly missed. Uh, I just want to call out uh, Nanisma, who's uh, actually put in a message. I think it was part of your presentation where she mentioned that in Puerto Rico, um, we are ruled by US laws like HIPAA, similar, Medicaid, yeah, CMS, similar. Medicare, yeah. and all. Yeah, similar. So um, yeah. uh, that is another. Uh, important thing to observe, you will see most of these standards and governance laws in the developing countries are picked up by um, uh, things that are laid out by the US as and when yeah. the countries mature into the uh, medical systems, you sort of start having your own, your own uh, uh, governance uh, laws and bills. Uh, which is good. And that's how your country evolves over a period of time. And uh, again, uh, um, whatever we are exposing right now, it's, it's not, don't try to fix it. I want you to observe. Um, the exam does not ask uh, country specific or region specific questions. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, it's in general trying to understand how the environment works. Yeah. So moving ahead, uh, let's look at trends and challenges. Um, I, I want this part also to be very interactive because uh, again, uh, there are some topics that we are touching at a high level, but let's, let's debate what the trends and challenges are. So the first one is going into health information exchanges. Um, as you are all familiar, um, this has been around for quite some time and um, earlier, uh, the reason that it was established at one point of time, it of course, it started from the US, but uh, the advantages of that was it allowed uh, health uh, care providers or organizations to um, share and securely access the patient's data, which is lying at a different location inside the environment. So 
in uh, in the us you have regional uh, organization interoperable organizations as well so they come out with certain standards they come out with certain regulations rules and regulations that needs to be adhered by everyone in the uh, exchange they use uh, tools uh, that would probably enable this of how it can be uh, channeled between one hospital to another hospital safely and securely and to only those who are supposed to see it right so that is one the second is the um, privacy and security the interoperability uh, standards um, it's it's garnering uh, a very good pace in the recent times so interoperability it helps again uh, so one option is where you try to establish the health information exchange but you can't just run by that alone you need interoperability and standards to help enable that so by the basics it is the ability of two or more systems or components to exchange information between each other right and uh, going into the standards uh, i think almost something that is uh, quite familiar with everyone is you know uh, at the high level is hl7 standards very recently you've come out with uh, fire standards so these are all uh, standards that are helping and of course there are uh, you know clinical codes nomad ct icd10 all these are part of the standards that enable communication of uh, healthcare data between systems um looking at dera integration um again in in trends this used to be a big thing there used to be interface engines uh, that used to enable that used to enable this uh, uh, interoperability between organizations and uh, applications and uh, uh, very recently uh, when standards are being introduced, the interface engines are probably diminishing, if I can say, if I can put it that way. Um, there was a quick question by Brianna, which is said, I'm still trying to understand HL7. Um, so a health level seven is a standard that has been evolved, I think, probably for 25 years right now or more. No, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but right. uh, hmm. um there have been different versions of the standard. Um, you have the version two to version uh, three, and then uh, the version three was three. somehow discounted for some time. And then there is a version mm. 2.7, which is currently being, or majority, mostly used, I would say around 70% of the entire implementation. Mm. Um, to give you an example, again, if you're choosing the best of the breed applications, if you have a HIS, which is running at the hospital, and then if you have um, a radiology information system and a laboratory information system, which you have chosen specific vendors to, um, because you like their features more and they're more uh, bringing into balance what you need to offer to your patients and the operations of your uh, hospital, the only, it still needs to communicate, right? So the patient comes and registered in the hospital information system from there, the patient's appointment and details and request for a particular maybe X-ray has to be transferred to the RIS. So this communication is normally done using an HL7 standard. Mm -hmm. This is um, what HL7 is used for in, in practical terms. Once the examination is completed, there is a report which is generated inside the radiology information system. And you can actually you need to then send it back so that the doctor can mm. see it and the patient can see it also. This communication that goes back from the RIS to the HIS is also done using HL7 standards. Yeah. And these are standards, HL7 standards are globally accepted and that's how it is being going along. Mm. Does that answer Just your question? Like, yeah. yeah. Just I would like to add uh, one more thing. Just it's uh, avoid duplicate data, okay, HL7. Like uh, in our case, we have a mainframe system. Some hospitals, they have mainframe system and we have a new HIS system. So 
patient demographic information can be automatically transferred from old system to new system using HL7. Those two systems, how they are going to communicate, we need some kind of standard. HL, so that is standard is HL7. So it's a wired duplicate work. No. Am I right, Flip? Yep. So um, that's good. Let's let's move ahead. I think I don't have. So other trends that we are seeing is uh, data warehousing. Again, a term that is uh, has already been updated, if I may put it, it's more like data lakes on the cloud right now. So data warehousing or data lakes is how best do you collect data of your uh, of your enterprise, of your organization, right? Uh, you need to plan for it. What is the way that it has to be um, designed and uh, uh, aggregated over a period of time so that you can analyze, consolidate, analyze, and get different kinds of uh, business intelligence out of it. Right? You, uh, at the end of the whole thing, all um, information technology systems or management systems uh, is a functional that uh, functional uh, facilitation towards the betterment of the organization running, right? So earlier used to have the term ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading. Uh, right now you have more cloud terms coming into the picture depending on the application, but at the core of it, data warehouses or data lakes as you know it is, how do you manage data properly? Yep. So that has been very important, uh, and the you know uh, just just to add a little bit over there as well, right? Um, the importance of data, uh, you know, data is like the new oil right now, uh, in terms of the value that it is contributing. So, if you want to do any kind of analytics, any kind of AI, machine learning, um, data analytics on top of that, um, the quality of the data should be good. Um, in in um, in um, healthcare, we also adv uh, advise having certain kind of structured data as a part of it. If there are reports coming out, we also request for structured reports coming out of it uh, over a period of time. These are standards that are trying to be implemented because the quality of data will always come uh, into um, the the uh, uh, contributing towards the output of the um, data that is uh, the the yeah output that is going to be coming out from the data. The the next topic is uh, telehealth and telemedicine. It's it's a very broad topic, if I can put it. Uh, the telehealth is um, more from a concept of uh, right now, if I can put it uh, in this way, there are a lot of IoT devices that enable. Uh, doctors to capture your healthcare vital signs. Um, again, those are all used using um, certain standards as well. Things are coming into place. Telemedicine, of course, is facilitating the communication of the patient to the doctor and how best you can communicate using um, a mobile or a tablet or a computer. Uh, without physically going to the doctor or meeting the person. So the importance of telehealth and telemedicine, again, you would have seen that to be, uh, you know, I, I would say it was a very steep curve in the last couple of years during COVID times again, because COVID being another infectious, highly transformative uh, disease, um, we had to, uh, restrict people from moving and the doctors were preferred to have the consultations remotely, right? So telehealth, telemedicine, again, it's a very broad topic. Uh, again, these are trends and uh, things that you need to be aware of. Uh, you can take a whole day discussing telehealth and telemedicine. There are definitely a lot of standards that are coming around it. So we're just going to touch upon it from a high level. And of course, the last one is privacy and security, you know, um, data in the hands of the wrong person is almost criminal. So um, uh, it is very important um, to make sure the data that is being collected is protected 
and safe uh, kept safely it should not be misused it should not be um, edited or deleted or um, for any reasons because it has a clinical impact uh, on the patient right so if you are a patient of certain having certain data in the system it should not be observed by the wrong person it should not be edited by the wrong person and yesterday we touched upon the topic of audit trails uh, auditing the entire thing and trying to understand what exactly is happening with the data and in the system so privacy and security different countries have different laws uh, for that and um, yes uh, like some of you mentioned hipaa is also uh, something uh, of that the gdpr in the eu is that in india we have um, we are coming out with the you know uh, privacy and security laws very recently and specifically for healthcare so usually it's it's layered down like that any any questions around here i think with that i'm almost uh, that is done with one, the yeah one question what is data mart according to my knowledge it's a subset of uh, data warehouse Mm. Data question Mart is a specific question. I'm also not very familiar with that no. term, but let no. me get back to you on that. No, Maybe I would like to explain this. Yeah. Uh, sure. Data warehouse, you know, it's a data. Sometimes we create da data house. Just I would love to elaborate. So I will, like uh, suppose uh, in India we have uh, 20 states, uh, 28 states. Just I will give example of uh, India. So sometimes government requests certain data from all the states. So in, in our situation, all the states, are, are they, it's not connected together through some kind of technology. So each state will send their data to a specific data warehouse, okay? So data will go from all the 20, 28 states to some kind of warehouse, and then data cleaning and all the process will happen, and government will take what data they need from data warehouse. And for uh, a small uh, scenario, like, you know, sometimes we create uh, when it's required, Okay, we create a data warehouse, so a small data warehouse, we call data mart for a specific purpose. Okay, so it's like a subset of uh, data warehouse, data mart. Yeah, I also just quickly Googled it, but yeah, very true. Um, I think the whole um, idea about is also the logical separation, if I can put it, between the databases. Um, there are some data that you do not want to be exposed uh, to the other set of data. And there has to be a separation between these data that has been collected. So yeah. um, usually as a part of the database design, you sort of identify that as a requirement in prior and then keep that separately and keep it in smaller chunks for, it can be for various reasons. Again, from an architecture perspective, I think it would be one to protect data from being uh, moved from one to the other, or if there is an attack, it is protected. Two, I think it's also from an architecture perspective to keep it simple and uh, uh, easily, um, you know, facilitated to only the right set of people. And there is a logical separation between the entire data and the data marts, the data warehouse and the data mart. Yeah. So with that, I come to the end of my section. Um, yeah. So I, I do not have anything. That is the end of my. Uh, this thing, I'm going to give it back to Noor for the last part of today's mm -hmm. uh, session. Yeah. yeah. Philip, just we talk about HL7, so why not finish also a fire? Uh, it's uh, in Okay. Uh, sure, sure. So, HL7, you know, we have uh, many versions. HL7 2, 2 is very popular, used. Then HL7 version 3 is there. Latest one is fire. Fast, health, fast healthcare interoperability resources. What is the advantage? If you use fire, two systems can communicate each other without any modification in those systems, okay? They use API, application programming interface. So fire is a huge uh, topic. We'll, uh, we'll try to make a uh, new uh, webinar later. Okay, Philip, that's all. So I'll try to. Yep. Thank you, uh, Noor, to add on uh, with fire because I, I would request, you know, um, as if, if uh, at the end of the session or probably just anybody who's uh, interested in to understanding how data uh, interoperability is evolving, please look into HL7 fire standards. 
This is of course not in the scope of the certification per se, but being aware of it will definitely help. They might be asking what is you know, fire and uh, from only a definition perspective, but that being said, uh, it definitely will add value to your general approach uh, being in the health information uh, domain. Yeah, thank you. And uh, over and out to Noor. Thank you, everyone. Okay, just give me one minute. The metrics seem current. Philip, can you see my screen? Clinical informatics? Yes, I can see it, but it's not on the slide. Not on the slides. Wait. Let's drop and share again. Now it's okay. Hi, Philip. No, no, sorry. It's still not in full mode. If you want, I can I, I don't know. go ahead. Okay, share from your side. I don't know. I have some problem. I'll do that. Let me do that. Yep. Yeah. Yes, Has it started? Yeah, it's started on it. Now we are going okay. to talk about, uh, now we are going to talk about clinical informatics. So in healthcare, there are many informatics tool, like we have nursing informatics, uh, pharmacy informatics, population health informatics. So we are going to talk about uh, what informatics do. Informatics provide inside data, okay? You know, data is coming from vast resources. So role of the informatics is to collect data from all the resources, like data is coming from users, mobile, data is coming from their electronic health records, uh, like PH, uh, personal health record. So what they do, they collect data, they analyze and provide inside views, okay? So let's see the def some definition of what is health informatics. Health informatics, also called health information system, it uses information technology to organize, analyze health record to improve healthcare outcomes. Another definition is, is health informatics deal with resources, devices, and method to utilize acquisition, storage, retrieval, and use of information in health and medicines. Now we are going to talk about tools, include uh, medical terminology, information and communication systems, and computer technology. Healthcare informatics provides electronic access to medical record for patient, doctor, nurse, hospital administration, insurance companies, and health information technicians. Can we move to next? So now we are going to talk about what is health information technology. Health information technology is information technology applied to health and healthcare. It supports health information across computerized systems and secure exchange of health information between consumer providers, peers, and quality monitors. So now we are going to talk about what, uh, we have already discussed these uh, topics. What are the main uh, technology used in healthcare? Like we have electron electronic health record system, we have CDS, we have uh, computerized physician order entry, and we have barcode medication administration. So here I would like to elaborate more what is clinical decision support systems. It helps doctors to prevent uh, errors, okay? 
it's not to write uh, doctors. Doctors can always write uh, serious uh, alert. Like any patient have a certain kind of uh, interaction with some kind of medicines, CDS system will alert. Okay, this patient, patient is allerg allergic to this medicine. Don't give this medicine. Okay, this is the role of CDS. Uh, please uh, move to next screen, please. So now we are going to talk about the role of nursing informatics, like. Uh, clinical informatics, pharmacy informatics in development of healthcare technology, what they do in healthcare system. Like nurse informatics, they can participate in development of electronic health record system. They can uh, play a critical role in development of clinical uh, decision support system. They can also participate in computerized physician order entry and barcode medication administrations. Okay, next screen, please. This diagram shows an uh, example of electronic health record, how it's look, okay? It's uh, simply a paper uh, version of electronic, okay? So electronic health record we have already discussed. It's a longitudinal health record of data, patient data, which is coming from all the care, okay? And electronic medical record, it's a simply uh, electronic version of patient chart. This is a basic difference. So what is the EHR function? It's a, like a clinical documentation. It contain medication, administration information. It's also manage uh, patient results. It's also manage electronic prescriptions. And it's also manage data from inpatient history or outpatient, okay? And it's also about uh, maintain standards, interoperability and outcome reporting. As we discussed previous, you know, how we are going to manage uh, data privacy and security. So we always use uh, three layers to protect patient data. First one is admin, okay? Like our policies and procedure at admin level. Second level is at technology level. Te technology level means we have some kind of firewall. We, have, we use uh, uh, what we call uh, some kind of uh, to protect data, you know? And just uh, name is not coming. Uh, one first one is firewall, antivirus software, malware software. Okay, and uh, at we have how we are going to manage data at physical level. Like you know, we have fire suppression system. In case fire happen, uh, we have a fire suppression system which uh, which will stop the fire like this. Okay, next screen, please flip. So uh, this diagram it shows how clinical decision support system, how clinical decision support system work. Okay, so uh, as we have all patient data is uh, stored in EHR system, and CDS system use uh, knowledge and some kind of algorithm to uh, provide doctors alert. Okay, based on a specified uh, logical condition. Like for example, it will give alert to drug drug checks drug drug interaction checks, reminders for preventive services and clinical practice guidelines integration. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this slide, uh, this uh, picture shows about computerized physician order entry. This uh, used by doctors to prescribe medication. Instead of paper, they use a system to prescribe medication. So we'll see what is the benefit. Like uh, the process where a medical uh, professional entering orders or instruction electronically, computerized provider, and, uh, sorry, the name, of, uh, there are three names for this, okay? It's also called computerized provider order entry or computerized provider order management. A process of electronic entry of medical practitioner instruction for the treatment of patients. The process of capturing physician instruction for patient care electronically to improve an efficiency of care delivery. Next slide, please. This slide shows how we are how we use technology to manage uh, medication administration. It's called 
barcode, uh, medication administration, what's happened? Technology used to scan patient and scan medication. It's prevent error, okay? Uh, when a uh, nurse or doctor, anyone, give any medication to patients, they must identify the patient using uh, technology, okay? So they scan their uh, barcode to identify patient and they use uh, medication barcode to scan, identify the, to make sure that uh, proper medication is given to patients, okay? There are no error. The nurse at the time of medication will scan what? The patient's uh, armband to assess the correct patients, he scan the medication barcode to assure correct medication is being administered. Next slide, please. Here we are going to talk about uh, nurse informatics, what they do. They try to improve electronic health record system, whether it's a clinical system, EHR system, CDS or PPOE, okay, or uh, barcode medication administration. Like nurse, they can uh, take part in test results, uh, progress notes, nursing notes, and medication record. This data, where it's stored, it's stored in electronic health record system. I will repeat it again. Like test results, progress notes, nursing notes, and medication records, these data are stored in electronic health record, okay? Now we'll see the, what is the contribution of nurse informatics in developing and improving technology such as electronic health record and computerized physician order entry has been crucial in reducing medical errors, patient care delays and healthcare cost. Next slide, please. Okay. Now we are going to talk about clinical informatics like physician who practice clinical informatics, collaborate with other healthcare information technology professional to analyze, design and implement and evaluate information and communication system that enhance individual and population health outcomes, improve patient care and strength clinician patients relationships. Clini clinical information choose the knowledge of patient care like combined with their understanding of informatics concept, method, and tools. What they do to assess uh, information and knowledge needs of healthcare professionals and patients, characterize, evaluate, and refine clinical processes, develop, implement, and refine clinical decision support systems, and lead or participate in procurement customization, development and implementation, management, evaluation, and continuous improvement of clinical information systems. This is the role of clinical informatics. Next slide, please. please. <clears throat> Same way, uh, please remember this uh, clinical informatics or nurse informatics or pharmatic informatics, they don't work in isolate, you know, all their role is overlap to one another, okay? Like uh, pharmacy informatics, they can help in healthcare IT environment, like pharmacy information, okay? But they, they, they can also participate in improvement of uh, clinical uh, provider order entry or pharmacy system. They can participate in clinical decision support, make use of many tools to assist the delivery of evidence-based care. Some include computerized order and reminder, sorry, reminder, clinical guidelines to allowable during CPOE condition, specific order set, and patient data reports and summaries. Pharmacists and pharmacists may participate in lead or help coordinate these if efforts, okay? They can take part, part in improvement of pharmacy systems or CPOE system or clinical system or EHR system. Next slide, please. Here again, we are going to talk about uh, pharmacy informatics. Take part in optimization of EHR. This may include 
adding mandatory indication with the medication order, creating a computerized antibiotic stewards forum, developing computerized antibiotic order with the appropriate treatment plan for that medication, identify clinically appropriate medication adjustment, and preventing therapeutic duplication in patient active medications. They can also take part in barcode medication administration. Pharmacist and pharmacists can apply knowledge of medication during the planning and implementation of electronic barcode medication administration, barcode medication administration, also known as by the acronym BCMA, is the hardware and software used to provide electronic verification that we that the five patient rights, what is five patient right? Like right patient, right drug, right dose, right route, and right time are achieved for the administration of medication. Next slide, please. Hmm. Hmm. The same, uh, we have already discussed this topic. Please move to next slide. Yeah, we have already discussed such point like a clinical decision support system, computerized medication reconciliations. As a, pharm as a pharmacy, pharmacy informatives, they can take part in all this uh, system to improve. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, Philip, I would like to talk about chain management. Hello, Philip. Yes, yeah, sorry, hi. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. Just explain this chain management, then I will go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, um, definitely. So um, for um, any applications that are uh, being going to be implemented in a hospital environment, uh, you know, the most difficult part as humans uh, that we have is something that is going to change in the environment, right? So we might be in a comfortable situation where we are happy. Uh, with what we are and it's going fine and all of a sudden you probably come out with a new system it's going to change the complete balance of how the operation works so change is always uh, considered as a, you know what do you say as, as, as a challenge to most of the times most of the people and there is always uh, uh, you know a very defensive approach that comes uh, from people who do not want change Right. So it has to be very carefully orchestrated as far as uh, uh, any new information is being done. And the core part of it is, again, bringing these clinical informatists and pharmacy informatists, because these are people who have both the uh, knowledge about the clinical applications and the pharmacy applications and know how it can actually be contributed. Right. So they are mainly... Uh, going to be involved in three parts. One, first, is the governance, right? How can it be done? Uh, what is the decision-making? Who are the decision-making authorities and how can we get it together? And uh, what is the selection process? Uh, how do we maintain it? And what are the support that is needed? That is one aspect. Two is the structure, right? You know, who are the people involved? Do we need a BA in it? Do we need a uh, the management executive buy-in as a part of it. So um, all these are what is the structure that needs to be coming into. So again, the role of clinical informat uh, informaticists uh, plays a very uh, crucial part in the whole thing. And last is the uh, clinical decision support uh, uh, change management process as well, right? So they give... And these are sometimes the typical things that they uh, ask for exams as well. You know, what is the change management process? Uh, they call it, they get it, bet it, implement it, watch it, fix it, replace it, and retire it. So that's taking through the entire thing. You identify a solution, 
uh, you vet it uh, for the features um, and you understand if it is actually fulfilling your requirements, you implement it, right? And uh, once the implementation is completed or the uh, delivery is completed, you uh, go through it and then it is an iteration process, right? You watch for it, you are note different things and then you start fixing it. If it doesn't fix, the other route that you normally take is you replace it. If uh, that is not the case, uh, you actually, the program, the, every software has to continuously evolve. And if that is not happening, finally, uh, if the vendor is not good and not advancing, you finally retire the application. And these decisions are again, uh, part of the change management. If you don't change it, uh, then uh, your organization will not be moving forward. So change management is a very important uh, part of the entire uh, information management uh, cycle. Uh, and uh, it needs to be looked at. There has to be key stakeholders as a part of this entire change management team. They have all have to come together with a uh, uniformed uh, agreement and decision to move ahead with this. So hope uh, that helps it. And, and I think that brings us to the end of the uh, yeah. clinical informatics session as well. Yeah. And one more thing, you know, so I have seen in real scenario, some of the, some of the time organization implement new system. System is perfect. Everything is working fine, but it's still it's failed because they didn't manage properly the chain management process. Like when we bring new system, you know, value is going to be changed in organization. Like suppose uh, someone is working like they're in electronic medical record, they're using paper. Some person is master in managing paper record, but when we bring electronic system, his position is going to be changed. He's going to be valueless. So he's going to resist the change. So this thing we have to manage it, okay? What to you, Philip? <laughs> so I think uh, that sort of brings us to the end of today's session. And I think, uh, you know, Everybody has patiently listened to us, if I can put it that way. <laughs> um, um, and we didn't yeah. even take a break. I wanted to give a break somewhere, but unfortunately, uh, for the next sessions, I will make sure that we call it out right in the beginning so that we take a break uh, so that you could uh, go and grab a cup of coffee. Um, but this uh, for today, uh, thank you everyone for staying along. Mm, flip um, one minute. Uh, we have some time. I would uh, request if you have any questions, please go ahead and put it. Let's let's take the last 10 minutes uh, to have an interactive session. Noor, did you want to mention something? Sorry. No, I, I would like to, Mr. Ishaq, our chair, to <laughs> celebrate something. Mr. Ishaq, are you there? Mm. Yes, I'm okay. here. Uh, just give me two minutes. Okay, I'm outside. So I will. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Okay, okay. No problem. Mm. So don't worry about uh, getting the recordings. We What we will do is uh, this is only day two right now. Uh, we have uh, the sessions over the next couple of weeks. What we will do is. Uh, I will, we will have to get it and somehow collate it and, uh, you know, uh, 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 somehow get the videos in proper format and for everybody to access as well. So once we have it, we'll make sure that, you know, some of the details are being sent out. We have a question on when exactly the recording is going to come out. And uh, it's interesting people from the US are also joining and I'm hoping, I'm thinking it's pretty early. Uh, for you as well. <laughs> yeah. Flip, I have a few questions I would like to share. Please stop uh, sharing the screen. Yeah. Few, yeah. So, screen. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And it, uh, can you see my screen, Flip? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just... Let's discuss about these questions. Number one, Flip, I, I would like to you to answer this. No, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so, myself. a small rural hospital wants to join a big organization. What is a major? What is major to consider? 
culture, process effectiveness, organization improvement. Last one. Is that an open-ended question, Noor? No, you're on mute. No, oh, sorry. Yeah. Red one is the right answer. Yeah. Culture. Right. I, I think yeah. uh, I agree yeah. to that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now let's go to second. Second question is asking about uh, hardware cost. 250,000 and software cost 100,000 and five years operation by staff cost 40,000 each year. What is budget for capital? Okay. So there is, you know, a difference between, I think operational budget and capital budget. Am I right, Flip? Hmm. Operational budget is our day to day operation and capital budget is like uh, when we buy some hardware, uh, when we spend uh, money in building our offices, that is called capital budget. Operational budget is uh, called uh, uh, budget for paying salaries for staff. These are come under operational budget. Okay. So if you calculate, you will get the answer $350,000. Uh, next question is a community initiative for drug information access for provider. How can we, from quality perspective, it is good implemented? So how we can say it's implementation is good? Reduce drug adverse, effective casting, you know? The first one is the right answer, the A, the red one, okay? So question number five, Isnomed used for, why we use Isnomed? Health terminology, okay. And question number six, for implementing enterprise clinical system, whom to add to the team for writing the functional requirement. Philip, we didn't talk about the functional requirement, I think it all uh, it comes tomorrow. It, it will comes come in the tomorrow. Next session yeah. as a part of the system analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Function requirement. So yeah, I, I think don't worry uh, for everyone. We will, um, we will share some set of questions with you at a later stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Noor has collated plenty of questions that you all can practice. I believe so. There is um, a set of questions, and of course, the earlier version of the review guide. Um, has also uh, questions at the end of every chapter, um, mm. which Noor has in the past made public as well. Um, so we, we will share these informations with you, definitely. Yeah. So don't mm. worry about it for right now. I think you just focus on the, you know, the story of healthcare environment and technology environment today. Um, and uh, try to just, uh, you know, explore your, uh, experiences and uh, exposure uh, based on what you've learned today. And we'll definitely share some uh, questions based on that. Philip and Noor, uh, Ishak uh, had the suggestion that uh, can we take view? I think uh, Ishak is connected. Ishak, do you yeah, want Ishak to is connected, yes. So what I was suggesting is uh, uh, the next Saturday, uh, if it is convenient for all, uh, can we start uh, half an hour late? whatever was the time today, right? Because we saw some people joining a little late. So will that be of help? Uh, if yes, can you put it in chat? Uh, if we start like half an hour later than the time we had scheduled today? Yes, one yes is coming from Brianna. Hmm. How many yeses? One, I, they all come another half hour later. So can we schedule this and from 5 p.m. next? It is, time is uh, <laughs> varying. Some are, someone because is requesting. Time time is okay. time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying the exact time because, you know, 
people yeah. are in different time zones so not to confuse yeah, yeah. so there is a no there no there are a couple of no's coming in I no think, yeah. so we'll try to stick stick with our same time <laughs> should we try yeah. so what's the jury i mean uh, salma are you able to count the yes and the no yes uh, the number of yes and no are equivalent uh, now mm. with one no i think there a lot of no's i think we should stick to the same time 4:30 okay. we'll stick to the same same time i request mm. uh, those who uh, join a little late today uh, please be on time uh, you know that uh, there's a lot of insight that you're getting you know people uh, really appreciate uh, noor and philip for the preparation they have done so they do get uh, motivated when we see people on time i thought today some of you joined as late as half an hour which wasn't good so please you know and we will be sharing the videos at the end if you attend all of you attend on time if you are attending late then there is going to be a punishment <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's it I, i'm actually driving so you could hear some noise in the background so sorry about that but again uh, th this is really very important hence i didn't want to miss although i'm traveling Uh, yes. so i would really appreciate uh, salma for putting up this show uh, together mm -hmm. and uh, also would like to thank noor and uh, philip cherian for their valuable time efforts and uh, exceptional quality of the training that we have seen in the last two days so we'll catch up next week uh, salma you want to just repeat uh, the timing in iest so that people can you know oh, uh, really yes. get that very yeah. clear So our next session will be held on 12th March, which is Saturday uh, at 4:30 p.m. Uh, the link for the uh, the link to access the webinar would be the same as shared before. I will definitely go and block your calendars again for 12th March with the respective link. 4:30 okay. p.m. IST. I repeat, 4:30 p.m. IST. Okay. Thank you all. Have a great weekend ahead. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.